Here we go again. Good morning, YouTube. Tire Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully, you guys are doing well. Yesterday got pretty crazy, so we actually had a, another high risk of flooding. You don't see these too often, but unfortunately, across Jefferson City to St. Louis, things uh, got even worse than what they were expected to be. Uh, thoughts with everybody who's in this area right now as they're probably going through some significant flooding at the moment. Rain is starting to die down over there for the moment, but more showers and storms may be expected down the line. Hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you're not done just yet. Today should be a little bit nicer, maybe a little bit later this into uh, this weekend and even beyond. We could be seeing more, so keep an eye out for that. But that was that's an update that's only valid until about probably another 14 minutes from the time I'm shooting this video. As far as today's concerned, we only have slight risk to deal with at the moment. Not to say that those aren't dangerous in their own right. It's definitely better than a high risk, though. That's just what I'm, that's just really all there is to it. But that being said, let's go ahead and get into the main topic of this video, which is severe weather. We have an enhanced risk that's developed over here towards McCook and Colby between Kansas and Nebraska and also parts of eastern Colorado. The uh, slight risk actually stretches all the way up to the uh, South Dakota line here from Nebraska as well. And we even have parts of Wyoming in the mix, too. So we have to keep an eye on that. Also, we're anticipating an MCS working its way in from the uh, Midwest and then heading into the Southeast here. Parts of Northern Georgia or Northwest Georgia, Northern Alabama and Southern Tennessee are in, in the line of fire for that. Main threat with that will be damaging winds. And then this upper level trough here is uh, gonna come into play here, causing severe weather in Canada. And then we have this uh, slight risk that's developed on the uh, upper echelons and towards the even, well, not quite the Adrian Dac but close to it over towards uh, northern New York around Watertown. It's also going to be a damaging wind threat with that as well. But as a whole here, day looks like it's going to be pretty active. Here's our 2% areas for tornadoes. Here's our uh, enhanced threat for wind. 30% area also hatch risk, so we could see winds above 75 miles an hour, possibly even over here. We may go live and cover this depending on how work goes for me. Uh, the wind threat there's the uh, hail threat here 15 percent here five percent here the mcs that's going to be coming through the southeast doesn't look like it's going to have a major hail threat with that so that being said let's go ahead and take a look at the 500 millibar here this is right at about i would say about close to 30 40 000 feet as time goes on here here's where that mcs starts to uh pop up right here and then here's that little uh, upper level trough that I was talking about as well. And then here's the feature that's going to be uh, triggering our severe weather off to the uh, western high plains here. So you can see that that ridge is starting to move a little bit further off to the east. This is the ridge that's been right here for the last little bit here. But now we can start to see that that's moving this way. It's going to be bringing that uh, counterclockwise flow around. So anything that's on the... Uh, that's forming on the northern flank of this, like this right here, you always have to look for the uh, threat of severe weather developing there. Because usually at this point, it does start to dip off into a little small wave, like trough-esque wave, if you will. That being said, let's keep this moving here. We only have about an 18 hour run here, so we're about at the end of it actually. But you can see how the uh, but you can kind of see the uh, clockwise flow beginning to develop here. And then you can see the uh, same going on with this. But the closer we are to that low, the quicker we start to shift from uh, clockwise to counterclockwise here with the uh, trough. So definitely uh, plenty to keep an eye on there. So let's go ahead and shift this over to 7. 700, we're looking more along the lines for short waves here. Here's where our MCS has developed not going to be anything super robust at this point when we look over towards this region here it could be a different story shortwave starts to develop later into the evening and i think that's when the damaging wind threat will start to pick up here so far in regards to how things will develop today i don't expect any mcvs at the moment of course that can easily change those are always a wild card during this time of year but you can see just on the flank of this ridge here 
similar deal for the southeast so mcs develops you always have to look out for the potential of an mcv but for the most part i'm thinking mainly just going to be seeing some widespread damaging winds mcv could help develop that further i'll get into what an mcv or mesoscale convective vortex is in another video that's going to probably be when things slow down again to be honest last but not least let's go ahead and look at the low level jet and there's actually a decent bit of shear and this is partially why i'm not really too concerned about one of those mcvs developing because it could actually have aided the uh severe weather threat slightly so it's actually something to be thankful for but nonetheless though there's a couple of pockets here and there where the uh, low level jet does try to kick up nothing super impressive it's actually most impressive more so towards uh, canada and more so towards the uh, upper parts of the uh, northeast here so now that we've looked at that let's go ahead and get into the dew points and for the most part we already know the deal during this time of year it's uh, already pretty muggy as it is and then on top of that the gulf of mexico has never really been uh cut off by any sort of ridging or anything like that so we get, continue to just get this uh, constant flow of Gulf of Mexico moisture pushing really far to the north here. Hence why we had so much heavy rainfall over here towards uh, Missouri. And even that Gulf of Mexico moisture itself even pushes its way pretty far to the north here. Southeast, we, we already know that this is not going to be a problem. Where that ridge is uh, positioned, it's just going to keep on just circulating that Gulf of Mexico moisture all across the area here. And it even hangs on and makes it pretty far out to the west here. This is going to be our where our enhanced risk has developed here. So, and you can see here we're well into the 60s by this point. Some places are getting into the mid 60s and, and beyond. So that being said here, last thing we're going to be looking at now is the cape. And then we'll take a look at the... Uh, overall radar view for the entire nation today so as we all know that mcs developing decent instability has to be uh, available here and we do see a fair amount of that throughout the day especially across tennessee parts of northern alabama and mississippi georgia is a little bit more questionable we do see some but it's rather limited once you get towards uh, northeast alabama here Later into the evening, of course, we have to be looking towards Kansas, Nebraska, where there's ample instability. It's not the most incredible thing I've seen. I've seen it get up to about maybe 2,000 up to 2,700 at this little orange area here. And then also up towards the northeast, we have just about 1,500, maybe even a few areas reaching about 2,000 joules per kilogram more than sufficient enough for severe weather but it's not going to be a, an explosive environment at this time of course models change throughout the day so we'll see what happens with that last but not least now we'll go ahead and take a look at what reflectivity will look like just going to put this into a loop and see what happens here because for the most part here's our mcs right here to the south then over towards the northeast we have this we have the little tail end of this storm system going and then we have isolated cells that will eventually congealed into a line here I'm in a little bit of a rush so i'm gonna have to get out of here but this has been tired metal at weatherman thank you guys for watching make sure you don't forget to like comment and subscribe and also share and i'll see you guys in the next video